From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up. Wake up! What's up, everybody? It is Wake Up Warchant, proudly presented by Zaxby's Indescribably Good. Wallace Johnston, though, says, let me try. Here's something I like to call Zax Facts, Corey Clark. Wallace Johnson okay. left, uh, left this comment on our YouTube page. As a result of your Zaxby's hawking, I tried the Zensation Zalad a few weeks ago. Got to tell you, I've had it 10 or 12 times since. Given wow. I live 20 miles outside of town, I make up reasons to go to Tally so I can pick up my salad with egg roll and fabulous citrus vinaigrette. That salad is the best. Thanks for getting me hooked, guys. What we hey, do. it was our pleasure. It was our pleasure. You're welcome. They are really good. He ain't lying, folks. Warchant.com is your ultimate Semmel sports source. Use a promo code Warchant30 for 30 free days of access. Uh, folks on YouTube, we appreciate you if you get the thumbs up, maybe even subscribe to the YouTube page uh, before you sign up for Warchant.com. Again, that promo code is Warchant30. Uh, do check it out. There will be a nice little feature uh, with Gene Williams, a.k.a. .com, he and Michael Langston sat down and had a, a bit of a fireside chat, if you will, about how we got here, Corey, when it comes to quarterbacks. And no matter what happens between you and I, Corey, two men who have gone on and come from disparate sort of career and life paths and trajectories, uh, no matter what happens between you and I, Corey, what always grounds me, what always brings me back to the fact that, man, Corey, that's my guy. That's my guy was listening to the seminal headlines all those years before I came back to Tallahassee mm -hmm. and you realizing the truth that in the 2015 Garnet and Gold Spring game, it was Malik Henry who looked the best out of all the quarterbacks. That's when I knew uh, this guy's the goods. Uh, right. they, they talk a little bit about Malik in their video and all the other quarterbacks that have come and gone since Jameis Winston and how we got here. So uh, do check that out. You remember that? Remember that? Remember those times, Corey? 2015 spring game? I do. Orlando. I, I think it was the 16th spring game, though, right? Because I think they were there in Orlando and then they played the opener oh, yeah, there, too, a few months later. So it was the 16. Uh, now, Malik Henry was suspended for the opener, but he was not suspended for that spring game. And I did think he looked the best. I, I would say that hindsight hasn't exactly proven me wrong. It's not like, um, you know, Aaron Rodgers w was on the team with him. So out of out of the limited uh, uh, competitors he had, I thought Malik Henry looked like the most natural quarterback. But it didn't matter, did it? Because he couldn't stay eligible or, or on the team. Uh, and the rest has been a bit of a train wreck. How does that happen? How do you, hey, how do we'll you squander? Video, oh, folks, you'll get to see. Oh, you're talking about Malik Henry. Yeah, man. Yeah, that, that it's to me, and I, I, went, I said this at the time. I've said it the, for five years now. It's always a red flag when you transfer schools three or four times. That's a kid that has never really had to get along, and as soon as something goes, his, goes against him, he's looking for an out. He's looking for – and you saw it in the last chance, man. Hmm. Some people are so good early in their careers, and I'm talking about 13, 12, 14. They look like prodigies, that they're treated so differently – that when they face any, and they're all, they're used to being awesome and being on a way to get away with whatever. Well, people catch up to you, man. And when you face any adversity at all, do you shrink back into your shell or do you get better because of it? And he was a kid that was really good and really talented and was obviously not a Jimbo guy because he could not handle adversity. He could not handle, it's just, it was an odd marriage from the beginning. And yeah. it sent them. It, there was plenty of reasons. There, there was the, the the DeAndre in the bar, the other DeAndre, um, Bailey Cosentino, Hockman Bailey Hockman. Yeah, that was a huge blow. Um, yeah, it was just it was. But that would to me that was the that was the big one. That was the guy that they thought was going to be the next one, mm. and it turned out he was not that person at all. All right. Well, with that said, saddles are prepared. Let's get on the ponies. Let's Actually, uh, we let's just feed them some cud. Uh, while we get ready to run the ponies. Uh, a little bit of news that came down on Thursday afternoon. Jamarcus Chapman, who earlier in the season decided to opt out of the 2020 football season, has entered the transfer portal. Uh, that is now three, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, Corey? Uh, Chapman, Bolden, and DJ Matthews, who have entered the portal yes. here uh, in about the last seven days or so. Three guys who, uh, you know, no offense to them, they have done a whole lot of nothing in their careers. 
Um, Why be I like think, that? Why be like that? That's well, seems, look, man. It's, I'm not. It's, I'm not trying to say this is endemic of like, oh, there's an issue. Look at Florida State; they got three people transferring out. But I mean, they got three people transferring out. I'm not gonna. Yeah, that's. A, but again, Marvin Marvin Jones tweet. My, the great Marvin Jones tweeted about it uh, when he saw that, and he's like, "Don't be worried at all. Be happy that these people are leaving. Don't be sad." Um, you know, basically saying uh, these guys weren't happy. They were happier being 18 and 20 in their last 38 games. He said so, that. Yeah, yeah, that was the Ooh. tweet. I'll, I'll, oh, I'll re- I should, I should. Shade like, tree might as well take the tree out of his nickname. Just shade these days. God, let me find it. You talk while I find it. Yeah. So Jamar Chapman uh, came in the 18 class. If I'm not mistaken, chose Florida State and Willie Taggart over Miami was the uh, sort of uh, you know head to head showdown the uh, the end of that. But uh, here I found it. Okay, thank you. I don't look at players transferring transferring from FSU as a negative. It's a positive. Says the kid isn't buying into the program, and that's fine. Says they enjoyed being 18 and 20 the previous three years. New sheriff in town. Hashtag change is good. Hashtag Mike Norvell. Ooh, all right. Yep. I'm not yep. going to I'm and, not gonna uh, deviate from uh, Marvin Jones. Whatever, yeah, man. I'm lockstep with you. And I, and I think, I, man, I, I, you know, Whatever it is that those kids might end up having nice careers somewhere else, um, but a lot of it, yeah, man, it's a get, addition by subtraction is a thing. I think the more people in your locker room that aren't happy to be in that locker room, that maybe are malcontents or make it known that they're not happy, can ruin a locker room. Or yeah, at least what's, taint it. What's a guy like Jamarcus? What kind of pull does Jamarcus Chapman have in the defensive? Well, no, line I mean I'm just or, if he's if he ain't around if he doesn't want to be there, don't be there. Well, yeah, uh, again, he it's an out. But I got um, you. I know. So you know what I mean. So it's like you know it, it ain't Marvin leaving. Yeah. Um, it's not Asante Samuel leaving. But if Marvin left, we'd be here like ah. I mean, really, what has he done? It's a bunch of potential. The that's, first come round on, buzz. man. That's in that's incorrect. Yes, we would. we would. We no, would. We think you think I'd be sitting here saying what has Marvin ever done? Come on, man. What has he done? I mean, he's he's been really good. No, I'm just kidding. Been, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, okay, good. I mean, there'd be a lot. I mean, oh, were you talking a... about Marvin Jones or Marvin Wilson? Marvin Wilson. Marvin Wilson. Uh, either way, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Either, either of the Marvins. It's the, the couple of good Marvin. I bet Florida State leads the country in uh, really good Marvin football players. Yeah, Menace, Jones, Marvin, Menace. Man, it, it, nobody else is close. Nope, got him. Nobody else is close. That's a, tri- that's a triumvirate that no other college in the country can put up next to with Marvins. Forget DBU. Marvin you. Marvin you. Absolutely. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, all right. With that said, ponies are ready to go. Renegade Express, by the way, is maybe our most uh, popular franchise, most listened to show. It is not sponsored. If anybody out there, and I know it's, uh, you know, we're all trying to get by out there, but if uh, you think that our reach could help you out, give me a holler if you want. Uh, Ray Pereira. Uh, maybe Ray Pereira wants yeah, to sponsor. Yeah, seriously, we just called the Ray Pereira Memor- not Memorial. You're still alive and kicking, Ray. I'm sorry. I love you, man. Uh, yeah, whatever. Whatever you want to name it, Ray, uh, or anybody out there, reach out to me. Tweet at me. Uh, email me. I'm around. Anywho, uh, this comes from Noel Six. I think this might be a new guy. I don't know where you're from. Uh, Noel Six, the way it works here is if you're a first-time person, you gotta you got to let us know where you're from and the, the most famous person that lives in your town. He went on a tear Earlier in the week, I think he had like 25 posts in a, in the span of like mm. an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, he was he was on fire. Here he goes. This is a good one. I like this. Nice and to the point. Would you risk playing Chuba or risk him injuring his collarbone again? And if so, <laughs> would Coach Mike Norvell be burned at the stake? Is he talking about risk him against Miami? Uh, I mean, he didn't specify. I guess, I guess maybe. Um, sure. Yeah, I don't think the risk, to me, the risk isn't the collarbone. The risk is the mind. Mm. Um, but you also got to hope that maybe he's tough. You know, people do struggle. Like, maybe he's tough enough to overcome it. Um, you know, Christian Ponder's first start, our first really playing time at all was that Virginia Tech game oh, gosh, up there yeah. in 07, maybe? I think so. Where Weatherford got knocked out. Yeah, yeah. And he had some nice moments, but then he was terrible at the end. And that didn't that didn't affect him at all. He went back and won the job and had a really good career and became a first round pick. So you can be thrown to the wolves and not have it wreck you, even if you don't play well. But that would be my that would be my big concern. Not the collarbone is the is the psyche. But you know his his brother's a tough kid. Chubb has had to be tough his whole life because he keeps falling off things or into things or something. So he's shown he's shown the ability to bounce back. So uh, so yeah, I, I would if he's healthy. I don't think I would risk starting him just because, man, I think he's, you know, if he, if he's suffered through COVID, which is, again, that's what his mom said, 
He wasn't around the team. It's not like you can be at practice and getting mental reps when you have COVID. So he hasn't gotten the, even the mental reps that the other guys have gotten. But I would certainly not hesitate to have a package for him. And I don't mean just, hey, he's going to run right, and now he's going to run left. I mean, you could have five or seven simple plays where, okay, run right, and if they come at you and Tamari is running downfield, throw it to him. Like, you can keep it pretty simple. Um, but I would definitely get him in the game sooner rather than later if he's healthy. I saw this tweet from somebody who covers Mississippi State, and this probably applies to any coach, but, you know, they're all excited and Starkville for Mike Leach and his offense. And K.J. Costello, who transferred in from Stanford, said, if you know what you're doing in this system and can make quick decisions, you're going to succeed pretty fast. I mean, I guess that's pretty universal. But I don't know, when I heard that, just kind of struck me. Because, again, that was like one of the first things that we heard from Mike Norvell when he came to talking about his quarterbacks was him sort of complimenting the way that Chubba could see the field or conceptualize what they wanted to do. And I just don't think – I don't know how many other guys on the roster give you that. And I'm not – yeah, the collarbone to me, that's not like your calf, like a calf strain, and if you push it, you're going to maybe blow out your Achilles, like a KD situation. If you re-break your collarbone, it's, it's, it's back to square one. Not a good thing. I'm not trying to be flippant about his, his health. But, yeah, I mean, if, if he were to get banged up, then you, you kind of reset the clock on him. It wouldn't, it wouldn't lead to further damage. I don't think like you, you exacerbate a collarbone injury by re-breaking it. Would it be a good or thing, a hamstring, obviously? like a hamstring too. Like, yeah, if you come back a little too early from a hamstring and then you're lost for the next four weeks because you really pull it or you tear it or something. Yeah, I think. I mean, they're not going to let him back out there if it's not healed. Yeah. They're not going to risk it. Um, so, yeah, if he's playing, then that collarbone is fully healed, and if it happens to get hurt again, that's just freak crazy luck, yeah. bad luck. I'd let him roll out there against Miami. I, I think I like. I think you found a happy medium there. Yeah, give him a package, and, and not like a Jordan Travis package. I'll give him like a legitimate fifteen play, sort of. You know, give him a script. Uh, you know, well, get, yeah. script him, script him up something where you're like, hey, you're going to go in. This is the first down call. This is the second down call. This is the third down call, yeah. and just do that all the way down the field if you have to, or have, have give him twelve or fifteen plays to really know. Yeah. And you know, again, I don't think you can play him a whole game. Just because, not because you can't play freshman quarterbacks anymore. I, I legitimately think him being away from that long, for that long, really uh, hampered his growth. I mean, that's just obvious. It's a quarterback. You can't, you can't practice for two and a half weeks out of nine as a true freshman with no spring practice and be ready to go. Or maybe he can. Our maybe savior, he can. Our maybe Trump is the guy. He's yep. just a, he's a silver bullet for me, folks. I mean, that's that's the it's the quickest way back out of all this is a good quarterback. Hopefully, it's him or Tate, somebody, just somebody. Knowles MG four, wake up. Hope all is well with my favorite podcast fam. My questions are as follows: Why did Lawrence Toffoli only have a couple of carries and never got back in the game? How many times do the so-called veterans have to make mistakes before they are pulled for the freshman? Thanks for all you do. Go Knowles. Yeah, but the other two aren't veterans either. It's not like they went back to Ty Jones or uh, you know somebody like that. I mean, Corbin's started two games in his career, and then that was Webb's first career football game. I thought Webb looked pretty. I thought they both looked good at times. I, I think they're different guys. Um, neither one of them's Cam Akers, but we knew that going in. I think Corbin got you some tough yardage when you needed it on short yardage, and Webb showed some explosiveness and some slipperiness. I don't. I don't think either one of them did anything terribly wrong to, um, to, to keep Toafili off the field. At the same time, I get it. Like he looked pretty good. He had a nice burst, and then he didn't play anymore, and that seemed a little odd to me. I mean, twenty-five, not even twenty-five. Nineteen carries from the running backs. Webb had thirteen. Corbin had six. And what was the total? Uh, Thirty-five. Nin Jordan Travis. No, had I mean six. 19 for how many yards? Oh, uh, 57. Yeah, not great. So three yards of yeah, three they, yards they each they each out. average three yards a carry, both Webb and Corbin. Yeah, I know for some reason I thought Webb did a little better, but we're really, I mean, come on again, Aslan, listen to yourself. We're talking about two guys that average three yards a carry. It, it, it does make me wonder about the this whole sort of hey man, like you you get your one shot, you got to make the best of it. I that I guess that sounds good. I mean, Mike Norvell knows more about football than I do, so I'll defer to him. But I've just always been to that school of thought. Like, you got to get – guys got to get in rhythm, like that, especially at running back. That's such a rhythm, vision, like, let me be out here. Let me get the feel of things. 
and to have these guys kind of come back in and out and maybe throw another guy in the mix, I don't know if that's exactly uh, the right elixir. And, I mean, Toafili, I think, did he catch that screen pass? I think that was the first play coming out of the rain delay. And it was a really good play. And Greg McElroy pointed it out on the on the telecast because you know, like when you come back out of a, a delay like that, it's just going to be like, hey man, we still need the effort, we still need you to be juice. Let's go, let's get after the quarterback, let's get after it. And then they dialed up a screen pass, and like boop, and then I'm pretty sure that was the toe feel, and he busted off 12 yards. I'll, I'll double check the play by play on it, but I mean, it was one. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's kind of like the whole Kalen Labor thing back against Virginia Tech. Like he had that, but that one run was spectacular. And I was like, well, how come we yeah. get in more? Like I didn't, I didn't see anything from Toffoli that made me think like, dude, this is, I, I get it. Like it, it's worth a shot, but I mean, they they had their rotation, and I don't think that was uh, an egregious sort of a yeah. But oversight. hey, as we go on, three yards ain't gonna cut it in uh, three yards to carry, and you gotta find ways to get the dudes that are special the ball in their their hands, and maybe he's a guy. Um, but I, I just I don't want to be too reactionary after one game to say that Corbin and Webb aren't it. Uh, it was one game. Yeah. Uh, let's let, by mid season, if they're still averaging three yards a carry and Toa Feely's getting on the field for four plays, I think that's a very fair question. It's a fair question now, but I think it'll be uh, you know more of a pointed question. Like, hey, what's the deal? Yeah. Where, where's Where's Toa Feely, Mike? Where is he, buddy? Where's Wallace? Tell me where's yes. Wallace. <laughs> Where's Noonie? Uh, Mike511. Not sure if this is a serious question or not, but hey, you're a subscriber and you've been around for, wow, 14 years. So I'll read it, There it, it is. Man. Nice. Good grief. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you, man. Have they built the football-only facility yet? No. They have not. Next question. <laughs> Big C. I mean, Mike, they just haven't, man. It's uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know where that falls on the... Uh, Unless, the I mean, hey, you can call... I, I, I think of Dope Campbell Stadium as a football-only facility. <laughs> they don't play soccer in there. That's all they do. Pe oh, our people boy. get their steps in. That's it. That's clever, man. That's really clever. I'm proud of you, Corey. Well done. Pat yourself on the back. It, buddy. Big Steve-O, 22. Next question. Morning, fellas. Hope all is well. I'm actually a little bit optimistic about the team, but may finally have lost hope in Blackman. It seemed like the line was giving him time, but there were a few times where he moved right into the pressure. Serious question. Do you think he has some form of PTSD, meaning he's not used to having that much time, and when he does, he freaks out and just doesn't trust anything around him? Could it actually be worth trying something new, meaning a different quarterback, since they haven't been through all the hardship Blackman has? As for our defense, no comment. Except, great work, Asante. On a more somber note, our son is going to require another open heart surgery on Tuesday, so thoughts and prayers are greatly appreciated for our little warrior. This will make two surgeries in less than 10 months. As always, go Knowles. Man. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a hard... I, Okay, we'll answer the question. It's hard to it's hard to like think about yeah, football, sorry, man. You know what I mean? To, yeah, that's. Uh, I don't, it feels it's... like almost uh, dismiss. I don't know, like uh, thoughtless to talk about football when when that's going on in life. But you asked the questions, so we will answer it. You know, we're thinking of you, man, and we you know we hope everything goes well. Um, and that's the last one. It better be the last one. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah. Blackman does, and you can understand it. It's understandable. But Blackman, Blackman sees ghosts. That's what we've called it for a while now. Um, that aren't there because you know, for a lot of times they were ghosts, and he was living in like the Amityville house, and it was really scary. So we get while he's while he's a little shell shocked about things. And um, it, but it, it, that game, there wasn't that much pressure there. And yes, he. I, he rolled into some pressure. He also rolled. When, when you roll to your right, you cut the field in half. And that's why good quarterbacks don't just all. The only quarterback I know that kind of rolls to his right and is still awesome, that rolls to his right a lot, is Mahomes. Because he's got a cannon. Aaron he can Rogers throw it to the other side of the field. But Aaron Rodgers will roll to his left, too. Yeah. It, or stay in the pocket. I, I see Mahomes rolling to his right a little bit more than the normal quarterback, but it doesn't matter because he's got a howitzer. Blackman doesn't. And so you cut the field in half when you roll to the right. You you make it easier for people for the defense to. When you cut the field in half, you're easier to defend. And he just he doesn't see the field well. And I think he looks at the rush more than he looks downfield. That's not the sign of a good quarterback. But also, it's the sign of a quarterback that's been hit a lot, man. And he's just been put on his behind a lot over the years 
mostly through other people's fault, sometimes through his own. Um, even last year, he'd, he'd, he'd kind of work himself into sacks or he'd, he'd hold the ball too long. But yes, that's exactly what's happening. That he just, he, he sees the rush. He feels pressure that's not there. And that's nothing you can really, how as a coach do you coach that out of someone? Yeah. Do you hit them a lot in practice? So he, like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he's got a green jersey on in practice. So he, he can look comfortable and stand tall in the pocket because he knows he's not going to be hit. But in a game, he doesn't know that, obviously, because he will be hit. So he, he gets a little panicky and rolls to his right. And I don't know how you simulate that in practice other than making him live all the time. So, so then he feels hits. I don't know. That's that's worth asking. That's actually a, a good thing. I might need to John noted out of that. Maybe I'll ask Mike Norvell about that. Like, I mean, yeah, what can you do? You're limited. I mean, there's only so much you can do in a practice to simulate game conditions. But, man, I mean, that's, uh, that's really holding the team back. That's really holding the offense back. It's just him not being able to pull the trigger on things. Because I do think things are open downfield. And, again, if, if this offense needs 11 guys to execute every single time, on every single play to to be effective, and just that's not going to happen. To your point about Jimbo saying you just can't coach every yard, yeah, man, just guys are going to lose certain one on one battles and plays. Other guys need to kind of be able to pick it up and and make plays happen. But it's just guys have to be getting open. I just refuse to believe they drop back fifty two times and only twenty of the times guys are, are open downfield. I just don't think he trusts it, man. I just don't think he trusts it. Uh, and I don't, and I don't even know why, because like, what happened? He ended his freshman year like on a good trajectory. It wasn't like he was going to go into the 18 season as a Heisman dark horse or Davy O'Brien watchlist guy. But, like he, you know, put together some pretty good games. I know the competition wasn't the best, but still, he looked pretty good, all things considered. Misses most of the 18 season behind Francois, plays against NC State, and you know, puts up 400 yards, and then just you know, nothing has has taken. There hasn't been any growth. It hasn't been a regression either, but it just it there just hasn't been growth. It feels like maybe that's maybe he maxed out. Maybe that's the best he was, and and as a true freshman, ironically enough. <sighs> uh, all right, let's move on to the next question. But indeed, Big Steve O twenty two thoughts and prayers with you and your family, man. Uh, let's get through this on the right side of it, man. Uh, MCAT DT that stands for Marching Chiefs all the darn time, right? Hey, guys, wake up. One of the biggest problems we had in 18-19 and the Georgia Tech game was the lack of second-half adjustments by the coaching staff. thought Jimbo was great at assessing uh, what the other team, or assessing, rather. He spelled it wrong. It wasn't me, everybody. Get off my back. Sorry, MCAT. I had to throw you under the bus. Jimbo, great at assessing what the other team was doing in the first half and making necessary adjustments for the second. I think Norvell will be able to do this, but I did not notice it during the Georgia Tech game. Thoughts? Also, status of Corey Wren. Did not see him on the field last weekend. You guys are amazing. Keep up the great work. Go Knowles. Did we not see him on the field? I, I, I know I, did, I know he didn't play, but I thought he was in uniform. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't recollect uh, on that. Should I look at the uh, – <laughs> if I pull up the participation chart, I mean – I don't know that he got in the game. You could check, but I, I did – what number is he? Uh, eight? Eight or nine? Eight or nine. Him and Toe Feely are like back to back. I got the rooster in front of me here. DJ, or not DJ, right? What are we talking about? Corey Wren. Not even close. He is he 16. Is 16. Yeah. yeah, I definitely saw him in warm ups. I do remember watching a guy go, wow, that's a burst. Uh, but that, that was in warm ups. Didn't see it in the game. Uh, so, yeah, no, I just don't think he, they obviously don't think he's, he's ready. Um, you'll see him two weeks for, or in the Jacksonville State game, I'm sure. You hopefully see a lot of these guys in that game, but uh, I guess they didn't think he was ready. Um, what was the other part? Uh, other part of the question was lack of second-half adjustments. Yeah, and I, I was going to say I, I agree with that, uh, but I, I, would, I would also say this. Jimbo wasn't great with Blackman either. Well, his, no, his, he, had, he had good second halves, man. He had good second halves. I feel like he had better second halves than he did first halves that freshman so, year. Yeah, but the, the, the 13 the Jimbo, Miami game. the 13, 14 second half Jimbo adjustments guy, and you whatever, give it all the, the James, if you will. Yeah, that, that wasn't happening a lot afterwards. But you know, uh, no, miss that came out. I don't know, yeah, no, but I, I think that, that, that no, Jimbo, Jimbo had made some, Jimbo's good at it. When he's got the horses, he's really good at making adjustments. Um, I think, I, again, I just think, I don't think that Mike Norvell looked at that first half and was like, okay, I see some things. I don't see anything we can exploit. Good luck, guys. I think they had, I think him and Dillingham had a plan 
that they thought would really work and that could counter whatever Georgia Tech was trying to do to them. And, you know, you need you need somebody that can execute it. Um, and it, it didn't seem to really be happening. And this is a guy that has had a penchant for not being great in the second half. He had a good... The only time I remember James being really good in the second half and really good is probably really strong, is too strong, was the Miami game of his freshman year. But I'm, I'm just thinking back to the last drive. He, he made some plays on that last drive to put them ahead, uh, maybe a couple of drives. Uh, and I know he threw the game winner against, you know, Wake. <laughs> but uh, other than that, uh, not, not a whole lot of second-half success for him uh, at all, really, in his career. Uh, and I don't, I shouldn't put it all. I'm not putting it all on James. I know that's what it just sounded like. Um, yeah, they need to be better about that. They were, they, w- they need to be better about making adjustments to not what the other team is doing, but to what their team isn't doing well. That's, that would be, you know, they didn't make, they didn't do anything well in the second half offensively. They never got it rolling again. And that's on them. You, you know, you know who your quarterback is. So at some point it can't just be all James Blackman's fault. Figure out a way to make him play better give him plays that he's good at or get him off the field. But at any rate, 13 points and no touchdowns after the first drive of the game isn't going to cut it anywhere. Florida State had 176 yards of offense in the first half, 131 in the second. They were averaging over 5.5 yards per carry on 12 carries in the first half. Uh, On 23 carries, they didn't even average 2 yards in the second half. And I don't know how much of that was injuries, uh, guys moving around, but – wasn't good. Was not well good. said. Yeah, again, it's you know we're not going to get too reactionary. It might have sounded in earlier shows. I'm not, you know, I'm not selling my stock on Mike Norvell. Although, hey man, you better watch out. Deion Sanders going to Jackson State possibly. Uh, you know, give 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 Deion enough time. Turn around the Tigers. Watch out, Mike Norvell. Man, that'll be something. That's going to be like there's going to be a that Showtime or somebody is going to follow them for a year. It's going to be like a hard knocks. With uh, with with Dion as the head coach at uh, at Jackson State, I'd you know, watch it. Yeah, you know, not to simplify it, and this is you know we don't have the answer to, and I don't want to spend too much time. But like, what I mean, what did happen in the second half that things just totally shut down like that? I mean, yeah, you credit to Georgia Tech for making adjustments. Like, why didn't I? Well, you know what, man? I think the, the 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 thing that didn't happen in the second half that happened in the first half was Cam McDonald didn't make a great catch at the five yard line. That that's it. Like that first drive was the same drive they had for the rest of the game, too. Except there wasn't any big plays made downfield. Uh, and they would get into, like, third and 12 or second and nine. And they couldn't they couldn't overcome it because why would you? Georgia Tech overcame a third and 16, but, you know, you can't do that. Uh, that's just that's just par for the course around here these days. But that drive, that drive was pretty similar to their other drives that they, you know, they'd get three or four first downs. It's just they did hit a big chunk play down the middle of the field. And... They didn't do that the rest of the time. It's not like they just, it's not like the Virginia Tech game where it was just straight up three and out, three and out, interception, three and out, one first down, another punt. I mean, Cam Akers had a 90 yard run in that game and finished with 86 yards rushing. Might be the first time in football history something like that's happened. Literally had a 90 yard run and then did not finish with 90 yard, uh, 90 yard, uh, 90 yards of offense. So it wasn't like that. It, they did move the ball in the second half, or I should say they got first downs. But they, like Dillingham was saying the other day, they'd be 10 plays, 28 yards. Like, who does that? It was just, they, they, they would be something that always stopped them, and they, did, they could not make the big play downfield. One of them was dropped. Two of them were dropped, really. Um, that might have changed the game. They were, and th- that kid's not going to make a ton of great throws. You need to catch the ones that he does make. And, and you you can't waste those opportunities because you don't get a whole bunch of them. Dude, Blackman was six of seven in his like first seven passes. I, there's a new stat. But I weren't can see they all? Stat. Weren't they all? No, man. First, he went 27 yards first completion, three yard completion on the touchdown to Keyshawn Helton, 12 yard. What completion. was the 27? What was the 27 yarder? Cam McDonald. Well, that's what I'm saying. Even that throw is not a good throw, but it's a great catch. Yeah, we'll still, but what I'm saying play, is it's fine. All, the other, all the other passes were short passes, controlled passes, passes he can do, and where he's only really got one read. And they, they are screen passes, and they just completely went away from that. If you look, I mean, and it's not a good thing on a podcast because people can't see it, but if you could look and actually see like the last 10 throws of James Blackman versus Jeff Sims, it is just sobering. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, like Sims went 20 yards, five yard loss, 12 yards, 11 yards, incomplete, 11 yards, touchdown pass. Uh, Blackman's like last eight were incomplete, two yards, five yards, incomplete, eight yards, incomplete, incomplete. Yeah. It's. Uh, don't forget that. Don't forget the scramble in there on fourth and eight. Oh, getting angry all over again. Tally Noll ninety seven. Wake up! Obviously, I'm bummed about the uninspiring start to the season that had so much buildup, but still like some of the things that I saw that we can build on going forward. It's also encouraging that Norvell started his last uh, started his season last year at Memphis, only putting up fifteen the first game, and then they went on to have probably their best season ever. My question for you guys is this. What will you and the rest of the fan base need to see in the Miami game to not go into panic mode about this season and staff? A win would, uh, a win would, or obvious improvement in all aspects would do that. But if that doesn't happen, what area in particular do you want to see a clear improvement in from game one to game two? Thanks for all you do, guys. Go Knowles. Well. I don't know what there's would make a few, panic man. I, two. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I wouldn't. I don't think there. I don't know that there's Just anything. Pedal all over that yourself. I mean, make me panic. Um, if the offense looks similar to what it did, and I'm talking about everything is a struggle, it's a slog, no big plays, ten points, thirteen points, then yeah, I'm definitely starting to panic about the team. That okay, that's just not happening. Like you just had a week off, and you still look the same. Um, I know it's a better, probably a better defense, but still, you you may you should be hard to guard. You should be hard to cover. That that, that Miami's not going to shut everybody out. So if if they struggle against Miami and uh, like they did last year, then yeah, that will be panicked. That okay, but even then, I, I think you have hope because of the quarterback situation, right? Yeah. And 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 what I mean by that is that you, I'm I'm going to assume that you're thinking, okay, if Blackman struggles again and the offense struggles again, well, that's a wrap. So even then, the panic doesn't – I don't think panic sets in because you assume a change is coming. If the offensive line looks like they did against Miami last year, I'll panic. I think, again, I mean, I don't know how good Georgia Tech is. I still think the offensive line did good enough. Um, but, yeah, I guess to your point, if, if we don't see any explosive plays, and, I mean, golly, Flores, I think, only had eight chunk plays, uh, which, you know, that's just not going to get it done. Uh, she's not going to get it done at all. They had five uh, passing plays of 15 or more yards, only three rushes of 10 or more yards. Um, I mean, again, I think to your point, it's it's the stuff about the team. Maybe you just start really bracing for a, you know, I don't know, three-win season or something if it gets really, really bad. I don't want to think about that. Uh, but the uh, what what do we want to see? I guess the the improvements. I just want to see. I want to see a faster defense. I want to see a more assured defense. I mean, I don't know what again. The pass rush is just kind of is what it is. It seems like if Josh Kando can't play, and if he even does come back uh, with an injured knee, I mean, who knows how effective and how explosive he'll be. Uh, but just like the the little stuff of like a defensive end trying to chase down a guy on a screen pass. I just I want to see Derek McClendon catch the guy. I don't want to see him get. Uh, left in the dust. I want to just see speed. I want to see confidence in, in an attacking style defense. I mean, the offense. I just feel if it's James, it is. I mean, I don't know what they can do. I just I'm I'm kind of at my wits end with James. Uh, nothing, you know. Again, not not taking shots personally at the kid. I mean, I guess maybe I'm taking shots at his game, but not who he is as a man. I'm not taking shots at his character. I just don't just don't understand what they really could do. What's going to flip in him to to make this all look different. I, you know this, but this will be it, right? I, I think this oh, is yeah. the this is his last stand. Um, and maybe you think that he, uh, I'm sure many people listen to this don't think he should even get that op opportunity. But this will be his last stand. Okay, he's had one more bad game. Now he's gotten two weeks off, and he's playing his, he's playing a rival down there um, in front of some fans, I guess. But this is his last chance. If it doesn't go well, if he struggles again, because now they've got game film to show him. And they've had two weeks to try to work on what he needs to get better at. And if he doesn't show any improvement with this new coaching staff, I think that's a, I think that's a wrap on his starting career at Florida State probably. Yeah. All right, moving along. Hopefully it's a bit of a upper question. Harley 07, would Chubba hurt Jordan Travis not 100%? Would you grab White Rector back to give you a solid dual threat? No. Eh, no, yeah. No. Um, I, I don't think... 
I, I think maybe they think there's a chance he could actually be a, an okay tight end. I don't think they think there's any chance he could be a, a viable quarterback in their system, and I think that would just be wasting his development. And I don't think they – I think if you want a dual threat – I mean, Travis Jay, we, do say it, Corey, well, say he, it. Uh, here's the thing. I don't know that Wyatt Rector is a dual threat. I don't know that he's a good enough runner or passer to threaten anyone. I do know Travis Jay is a good enough runner to threaten defenses. He's a single threat, but it's better than a no threat. And, um, you know, so I, and I'm not saying Wyatt Rector can't play at this level, but he hasn't shown that he could at three different, I mean, I guess he was only at what central Michigan for half a second, but, um, he's been here long enough Western to try to make Michigan, an impact. I think. West, well, one of those Michigans, Come on. not the Michigan. Um, so no, I, I would think if you're going to try to go with a mobile, mobile guy, it's Jordan Travis or it's well, Travis J. It's one of the Travises or it's Chubba. But I, I, I think. I think moving forward, that doesn't really accomplish anything. I think what you got to do is get Chuba or Jordan Travis ready to play. Yeah. Uh, you feel me? You feel me? You I hear me? I feel you, Corey. I feel you. Harley07 also adds that I have not had Zaxby's in a long while. I wish they would bottle that Zax sauce. Thank you for the grind. Yeah, that stuff is the truth. It is. All right. I wish I had some right now. Uh, Corey75WS6. Okay. Don't even know where to start with that. Corey Clark, did you feel personally attacked at the start of Seminole Headlines, and why would they try to jump the goat of podcasting like that? I don't quite remember what happened at the start of Seminole Headlines, but I always feel personally attacked. Yeah. So I can go ahead and tell you, yes. I don't even know what you're referencing because I don't remember it. You know, it's out of my mouth, and then I just forget it. Um, but I'm... I'm pretty sure I was personally attacked in some form or fashion because I always am. And, uh, yes, I, I, you know, I, 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 that's what I have to withstand every day, to, every week, to try to make, get that show on air. I have to carry those two jokers. Also addendum to my answer in terms of improvement. How about a run game? I'm the, I'm the uh, wide open guy. Run. Like run? Like run a whole bunch. Like run, run, run. Well, Just have a quarterback. You, you, better, you better have a quarterback that's a threat then or you're not going to be able to. That's my that's my opinion out of the gate. That's my that's my hot take. Well, yeah. Is if you have Blackman back there, you're not going to be able to run the ball because they don't respect him running the ball, and they will gang up on those backs. Um, and that's you're going to have a hard time blocking some of those guys. So it's going to be hard. You know, we talk a about mobile quarterback makes it a little tougher. Oh uh, yeah, we talk about him seeing ghosts, and I, I remember tweeting about it during the game because he kept handing the ball off, and it just seemed like he had huge acreage to run into and I remember saying like over under eight and a half yards when he actually does finally decide to keep it because again it just seemed like he had all sorts of space to run into and then the first time he did run I think it was like third and six and he ran it for six yards but that was the one where they, they reviewed it and I guess he actually came up short again uh, that's but then they went thing where it's like down and, and they got it, it so yeah. it's fine that is something we talked about on headlines though is like how do, you, how do you come up short? Right, I think somebody asked us a question. Like, how do you come up short on that play? Yeah. Like, you see the yard marker right there. It's, in, it's on the sideline. And you go out of bounds without getting the first down, and you're 6'4". It's just the little things like that that you wonder why they don't, why they don't click. Why, don't, why, why, why aren't you doing – like Jeff Sims a couple of times on short yardage situations was able to figure out a way to get a first down. Whether it was splitting defenders, falling forward, rolling over someone, outrunning them, diving, whatever he had to do, he kind of knew where that first down marker was. And it just doesn't ever seem like James does. Ever. You want to talk about scripting. Just, hey, man, first play, shotgun, you know, zone read, just go. We don't care. Even if you lose six yards and get blown up, sorry. We got a nice pack for you. Keep it. Just run. Matt AMCZ. Wake up. But he does it in all caps. So, wake up! Which of the following do you think is most likely to happen, least likely to happen, versus Miami? One, we force D. Eric King into some bad throws, force some interceptions, possible fumble when he scrambles and runs. Two, Norvell and Dillingham come up with some quarterback packages for Travis and Rodemaker, and we actually hit some of the wide open, shorter throws to playmakers, which Blackman continues to miss. Three, Tamori and Terry bounces back makes the big catches they are supposed to, and we have a couple easy scores. Most likely, least likely to happen. You know me, man. I think most likely is Terry. Um, are you eating something there, big guy? 
No. Snap. Why? I don't know. So it felt like you had like a, a, a wrapper un, unraveling. But focus on the question. I apologize. I shouldn't have asked What is that. the matter with you? I um, no, I, I would say that's most likely is uh, it, it, I think Tamari and Terry uh, will have a uh, a couple of big catches if the ball gets to them. Um, I think Miami will probably maybe trust their corners a little more. So you might get a few more one-on-one matchups. So you got to beat them, though. You got to get open and beat them. And then uh, what were the other what were the other ones? Uh, we forced Derek King into bad throws, some picks, possibly a fumble when he scrambles. Uh, Dillingham, Norvell come up with packages for Travis and Tate. Uh, short passing, quick passing, controlled stuff. I would say that one is the middle one for the middle likely. Yeah. And then the Derek King one is probably least likely. He's just played a lot of football, man. And, and um, he, I, don't, I don't foresee him getting rattled. Uh, he might not be great, but I don't foresee him making – the the terrible throws that Sims did. Like, oh. Sims made five just freshman throws. And unfortunately for Florida State, Emmett Rice couldn't catch one of them. I like how De'Eric King has this, like, 20-game sample of data for everybody to go off of. And then he doesn't look all that impressive against UAB in a season where, you know, who knows how good any team is in week one, still wins by two scores, and it's like, ah, he's nothing. He's a bum. <laughs> I'm worried about the kid, man. Uh, and, again, I just think like UAB had a game prior to playing Miami. So uh, whatever sort of distance there is between those two teams, I think it was much more uh, much more of a, a learning curve. or it was, it was definitely less steep because UAB had a full game. They played before Miami did. Uh, yeah, man, I'm 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 scared like the Dickens, man. I don't think I don't think we're gonna make that kid look like a bum or anything, man. The kid is he broke Tebow's records for you know consecutive games with passing and rushing touchdowns. I know it's the AAC and everybody seems to look good in the AAC, but that kid's gonna have. Well, we'll see, right? Don't you think season. that that Saturday will be a really good indicator? Um, I don't, have, yeah, Louisville's defensive a coordinator is a, he, he's he's the goods apparently. I don't know any. I don't know if, know, know enough about Louisville's personnel. I know their defensive coordinator is like really, really highly thought of. Uh, one of those kind of like up fast rising guys. If, if they have a really good season, I'm sure he probably will get a head coaching job somewhere. Uh, I think that's going to be a shootout, though. I don't think uh, it's going to be like a high 30s each team, and it's not going to make you feel good about like, eh, look, they contained him. Well, who's going to contain him? I mean, Amari can maybe uh, spy him, but I mean, who's going to come off the edge to make that kid nervous? Hey, buddy, maybe you twist an ankle and you don't even have to worry about it. There we go. Warpath, Noel, wake up. Hey, you guys are great. I'm hoping that Corey the Wise can drop some wisdom on us. I have two questions. I can barely remember a time. Barely. I can still remember a time, he says. When watching a game, even if we were down, I would still feel that, okay, we will get the ball back. We'll win it at the end. Sadly, those feelings are quite gone now. As soon as they get the ball two minutes ago, I feel I might as well turn it off. It's over. Do you think we will one day get back to the point where we feel we got this, we are going to take this game? Yes. It's a, it's a yes, no question. And yes, I do think that Florida State will get back there. It's Florida State. They'll, they'll get to back to a spot, a point at some point where they're winning a lot more games than they're losing. I don't know when that's going to be. I don't even know if it's going to be this coach, although I, I do like him. But I do think you'll get back to a point where you not only feel confident with two minutes left that you're going to win the game, uh, even if you're down by four or something, but that you feel confident that you'll blow some teams out. Like you'll you'll start it. You'll start a game thinking, "I oh, can't wait to see our second string," because we're going to house this team, and that hasn't been the case around here in seven years. And before that, it had been you know thirteen. But it, it, they will come back. They will. Florida State will reach the Clemson Heights again at some point. Yeah, there's not a lot of evidence that this team can win in crunch time, but I, the eternal optimist, look at at look at as look at it as rather that they're due. That's why I got yeah. like our Georgia Tech. They'll That's do right. it. They got it. They're due. The football gods owe Florida State a lot for the last few years, so it's going to come back tenfold. Warpath Noel also asks, keep hearing about how teams make the biggest improvement from week one to week two. What do you guys think will be the biggest improvement from the first game to the Miami game? Keep up the great work. You guys are really one of the few lights in the darkness that has become FSU football. Well, oh, that's sweet. I yeah, I mean, he's correct, Thanks. but Thanks, that, is, that is sweet. Yeah. Um, biggest improvement. Big improvement. Yeah, Wide receivers yeah. catching the ball? Uh, yeah, I guess. I guess. 
I, that's hard, man, because uh, I want to be specific. I don't want to just be like, hey, the offense will move the ball or the defense will uh, hold, you know, play better. Um, I'm trying to think of like a specific position that I think will play better. I don't think the wide receivers won't drop the ball as much. There's okay, well, yeah, th- that's good. That would be a nice improvement. That would be nice. How about holding that, that drop uh, number to zero? Yeah. How about that? That'd be good. Oh, yeah, okay, I'll go with that one. Uh, yeah, I'll go with that one. I would like to see them uh, maybe get a little more separation, uh, fight for the ball a little bit better, but then, yes, not uh, just drop balls. And this might sound crazy. I think they're gonna, they're, they have to run the ball better. I mean, I think they probably realized – you know, maybe they're limited at the quarterback spot and some of the things they want to do and maybe running maybe running to set up the pass is more of a sound plan than passing to try to open other things up. I just I, I can't believe they would think they could just put James back there 45 times against a, a team as aggressive as Miami. And, you know, in 18, we saw them do a lot of screen passes and they were, they were eating up Miami down there in 18 with a lot of that middle screen game stuff. So... Uh, maybe with that sort of aggression that Miami tends to bring. And the fact that screen passes, we're working for a little bit of time against Georgia Tech. Maybe that kind of stuff will, will help spring the run game. But I just, I would think, you know, with, with one game of actually getting your hands on another team and trying to move the bodies around, that uh, they're going to, they'll be a little bit maybe more aggressive uh, on the offensive line to try to open a few more holes and maybe guys like LaDamian Webb and Corbin. Well, yeah, again, you know, Corbin came off an injury, pretty severe injury with his hamstring. That was his first game back. Uh, maybe there's a little bit more confidence mentally that you can do it in a game and uh, they'll run a little stronger. So I think uh, run game, it'll be more than three chunk plays, uh, which is defined. What is it defined as? Ten run, ten yards? I'll say over on three rushes of ten or more yards from the running backs and the wide receivers will catch the ball better. Uh, I just unfortunately think that that quarterback of theirs is going to uh, give a lot more fits than... Uh, Jeff Sims did. I would also like to see a little more creativity, maybe, in what you're doing offensively. If it stops working, if it's not working early, like we suspect it won't, have have a backup plan. You know, they in warmups they were they were practicing under center, doing like a a set, like one back handoff, like traditional stuff. I'm like, oh, look at this. I don't think they did that one single time in the game. I guess maybe you have to practice that for if you get fourth and goal on the one yard line or something, where you you get under center and, and maybe try to. Uh, do a sneak, but then you hand it off. But I mean, they ran five receiver sets. I didn't, you know, they ran a lot of four. They were, they were, I think they ran some four receiver sets, but they, they mix it up a little bit in terms of their formations. Uh, but maybe, yeah, some, some two tight end stuff, get a little, get a little dirty, try to, to force the ball down someone's throat. Um, yeah, I didn't see a, again, like I wasn't, dis, I wasn't dismayed by like what they tried to do on offense. The execution was lacking. No, I mean, like, now, I meant more like you've had two weeks now. You're going to have two weeks to prepare for this game. You should probably know what your quarterback is or isn't. If he starts struggling again, do not bang your head against a wall and drop him back 44 times. Put somebody else in there. Put another package in there. They had wild cam last year. Do something. Have something that you can go to, which isn't just let's put it all on James Blackman's shoulders again. Get him off the field if you have to. Move the ball. Uh, we got about three questions left, I think, maybe four. Let's try to get to all of these. Sabaxley 12-12, wake up. Look, we know what we have with James Blackman. When things are good, he is on point. However, when the momentum turns, he begins to shrink. The fact is, he is not a big-time playmaker, and he needs some help. Saturday, he did not get much. Defense gave up lots of yards. Running backs didn't make plays, and the receivers dropped passes. I think he can still be serviceable and can lead. But the big plays at big moments will have to come from someone else. It scares me with everyone calling Chuba because I believe he can make some big plays, but he will have very high expectations put on him. And if he doesn't perform in those moments, would he too become damaged goods? I remember days when players would make plays to seal the win. Ward to Dunn, Winky to Warwick, even Ricks to Sam. Corey, could you name some others so we can just reminisce in this open week and remember what it was like in the good old days? Also, Corey, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a Canes fan about how their fans would throw water bottles at the opposing team because, well, they're Miami fans. I was telling him about the FSU player that was going around picking up water bottles and drinking them. I want to say Rock Preston, but I'm not sure. Can you help me out if you can remember? Thanks for the show. Go Knowles. I believe that was Preston Parker. It was, yeah. Uh, it was yeah. Not Rock Preston. Uh, you got the you got the name Preston close, though. Close. Yeah. Um. Uh. Let's. 
Yeah, Rock Preston would be a good one, man. He scored the tying in the in the choke and doke. He was the tying uh, touchdown. Um, yeah, I mean, you mentioned Ward and Winky. You had two Heisman winners. Weldon, a Dossy, Amp Lee would put teams away. Um, Peter, you know, they, they, look, man, they, there's been a thousand of them. Uh, well, I mean, not a thousand. Th- Dozens. I mean, there's dozens and dozens of, of guys that win the game. Now, that, the thing, though, about the 90s, you know, during the glory days, they didn't play a lot of close games. Yeah. So, um, you know, maybe in the third quarter, a team would be hanging around and they'd, they'd step on their throats with like a pick six or something. Shevin Smith was good about that. Uh, Warwick Dunn. Uh, there's a thousand. There's too many to name. There's too many to name. But uh, the ones you mentioned, Ward to, Ward to Dunn is the all-timer. Um, and then, yeah. You could you could go from there with two through a hundred. Anything in the eighties? Do you get anything from the McManus vintage? Chip Ferguson? You got anything in that uh that part of the menu? The what, it, it, the the categories we're trying to think of is something where they put them away. Yeah, yeah. Um, seal the win, like you know that. Yeah, one seal the play. win. Like I was gonna say, the eighty-seven Fiesta Bowl. Um, they got they were down by. Uh, this would be a probably good example. They were down by four. And Nebraska was going in to put the game away. They were at the Florida State five-yard line with like four minutes to go, about to put it away, and they fumbled. And then Dion De- might have recovered it, or Eric Hayes. Somebody recovered the fumble, but Florida State had the ball at the three-yard line, down by four with three and a half minutes left. And McManus drove them all the way down the field. Then they got inside the red zone, deep in the red zone, and I think they got Dexter Carter got a personal foul. So they had to bat- – Dexter Carter was a wild card, man. He dump- He's dumping flags on guys' heads. Talking all kinds of smack, yeah. Those are the little guys, man. They 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 have they they have big mouths sometimes. So he got a personal foul or unsportsmanlike. So they ended up having fourth and goal from the eighteen yard line, and my man McManus hits Ronald Lewis in the back of the end zone on fourth and goal from the eighteen to win the game. That counts, right? That's a good one. There you go. Okay, right. there you go. That's that's the one. That's the one I'll go with. Great moments in Florida State history, brought to you by Corey Clark. Should be you and Deckerhoff. These are like what Gene and uh, Burt Reynolds. Was yeah, it was Vic, it was, yeah, it was usually Vic Prinzi and Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Gene would kick it to him. Like, I think Prinzi would fly out to Reynolds' house, like, because they were college roommates. Uh, um, and so he would fly out to his California home, like, once a summer, and they would record all of them in one day. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, some of them were funny, too. Like, they were just games from, like, I don't know, four years ago where it was hard for either one of them to remember them. Like, what exactly? <laughs> oh, yeah, and Tiger McMillan was great. Or, uh, you know, whoever. You know, Preston Parker really had a great... So, those were still cool, though. I miss those days. And we don't even have that anymore, right? Like, Norvell doesn't have his own coach's highlight show, does he? I don't think so. I don't think I don't so. I know that Let's... they do that anymore. Yeah. Yellowwood's going to be out of business with all these coaches' shows not being highlight shows anymore. Uh, Captain D underscore 63. I believe Tamori and Terry's going to bounce back and play better. Not sure he has any easy scores, but I bet he'll play better than he did against Tech. My question... Uh, for you two is was the Big Ten conference practicing before they made a decision on playing football, and if not, how are they able to get in football shape in four weeks? They were some of the teams I think were practicing, not all, but some of them were still. And they, man, they they put the plan together. They think they get in shape in four weeks. They're going to do it. So, yeah, I think uh, I know when they first canceled that they were still doing. Uh, some workout stuff. Like they were still getting together as teams. Some of them were anyway. I know Michigan was because yeah. they made it abundantly clear that they were. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think they're just, you know, they're they're going to do whatever it takes to get ready because they really want to play. And they're and all. Apparently the Pac-12 yeah. might want to play too and the MAC. Yeah. And they're all in the same boat. It's not like they're playing SEC teams or ACC teams that have been practicing Correct. and playing. So it's, it's, it's all – everybody's kind of starting on the same handicap, if you will. Second part of his question, how is the Big Ten Conference eligible for the playoff with only eight games when others are playing ten or more? Uh, thanks for the great show. Sign up for War Chant. Eat at your favorite Zaxby's. Go Knowles. I mean, I think it just comes down to uh, you're going to have to weigh, like, what's more impressive, a seven and one – season are a nine and two season yeah. or, you know, eight and O oh versus 11 and O. Oh. Like if it comes down to that, I, I think that's, what's going to be the weight of, of what they do. I think I agree with you, but I don't think the powers that be the people that decide that are going to hold it against the big 10. They're going to almost probably try to reward them for actually coming around and playing that if Ohio state's eight and O oh, and Georgia's 11 and O oh, and they're for the last four spots, maybe Georgia's a bad example. Georgia would get in. If it's Ohio State and uh, BYU, BYU's and O, Ohio State's eight and O. Ohio State's getting in, even though BYU worked like mad to to fill out a schedule and play eleven games. 
they're still going to they're still going to give it to Ohio State. Uh, they're they're eligible because they're playing. They're playing in the fall. It's all goofy anyway, man. It's going to be a huge asterisk by this season. But still, they're all playing and I just again, I'll reiterate it like I did yesterday. It is so funny and sweet that that conference not only canceled thinking everybody was going to follow suit, but then ridiculed the people that were still playing as if they didn't care about the things that matter, like the Big Ten, the, the powerful and, and almighty Big Ten does. And then the Big Ten sees, oh, wait, they're actually playing. And they're not even doing it well. Like, their game's being canceled left and right because half of teams are getting sick. But they're still playing. You know what? We're playing too. And that's the only reason they're playing is because the other conferences didn't follow suit. And now uh, they can say whatever they want. They can, they can credit it to other things. It's quite obvious they're playing because the SEC and the ACC are playing. And they, they, it's full steam ahead. They saw it, and now they're going to play. And I think that's funny. Knoll 19 Hey, guys, quick question. Who is the blame for Warren Thompson's five drop passes? Willie Taggart or Mike Norvell? I've checked Twitter all week, but I've yet to see a rant from Warren or his mother. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing this team improve under what appears to be a competent coaching staff, but who am I kidding? Any staff more competent than the last one. With that said, I believe in Norvell, and I am anxiously hoping that he will be able to start removing the issues from this program. It is long overdue. Enjoy the show. Thanks for helping us through the fatigue of being a knoll these last three seasons. Let's be fair. It was only two, although they should have been five because they were so critical, both of them. Um, but, yeah, that's the thing about Warren Thompson, man. When you do what he's done twice now, I know his mom was the first one last year, but – you know, it wasn't deleted right away. Um, you know, when you call out your coaches publicly two years in a row within a span of eight, nine months of each other, two different guys, and then you go out and drop two critical passes, man, nobody, n nobody's going to give you the benefit of the doubt, dude. Like nobody. They're all mad at you anyway. And then you go out and do that. You, you don't want to become, uh, you know, I, I don't know. You don't want to come reviled. That's the right word, right? Yeah. Um, among fan base where they le legitimately don't like you. But if you have a couple more moments like that, 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 that nobody's going to have time for it, man. That's what happens. Fans are fickle, but that's what happens when you go on social media and you're not Marvin Wilson and you become a national headline and then you, you're kept on the team and then you go out and kind of, uh, you know, urinate a little bit in your first ever game and drop two critical passes People don't have time for that, man. You've got to earn back the fandom. Now, they'll come as soon as you make a great catch to win a game or even to, heck, score a touchdown. Just get near the red zone. Whatever you have to do with this team, they'll be back on board. But right now, man, yeah, people, thats I'm sure that sentiment isn't uh, rare. Last one. We made it, Corey. We did it. We did it. Steve. Warren, I love you, by the way. I'm like Norvell, man. I love you. <laughs> I love you. You, gotta, you, 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 you just got to... You, you don't need to be dropping any more passes, man, and want this fan base to like you. Well, look, if, again, it's just – if Tamori doesn't drop his catch, I mean, is it a big deal? If Emmett makes a pick six, is Tamorian's situation a big deal? If Asante is able to – if T Jarian Jones can be a convoy on an interception that should have been a pick six, we're not talking about Emmett. It's just it's uh, – it's not your fault, guys. It's not your fault, Warren. It's not your fault, sure. Tamori. It's just all you guys. All you guys together – just didn't get it done. So, you know, it's your team. Find a way to fix it. Reach down inside and be a bleeping pro. Future underscore Noel underscore Doc. I've been listening to you for the past few years. I decided to join with the Norvell 2020 promo. I'm from Callahan, Florida. Never even heard of that. I've lived in Florida practically my whole life. It's a hometown of Howie Kendrick and Frank Murphy. But now I'm living in Cleveland, Ohio for medical school. All right. Awesome, man. That's uh he knows the deal. Am I, he checked am, in. Am I supposed to? That is awesome that he did that. Are we supposed to know who Frank Murphy is? Who's Frank Murphy? He says Buccaneers in, in parentheses. Oh, okay. All right. I, I don't know. I mean, might be like, I don't even know. I know Howie Kendrick is. Yeah. Well, how about you look up Frank Murphy while I read the rest of this okay. question, Corey? You got Thanks, it, buddy. man. You got it. He's in Cleveland, Ohio for medical school. I would like to say that I really enjoy the show. I listen in the morning before I start my grind studying, and it helps keep me sane. I'd like to say to listeners to not downvote War Chant postgame videos just because FSU lost. I can't say I'm surprised with how the Georgia Tech game went with no spring practice. At least show improvement over the season. I think that Norvell should tell James Blackman that he can only take X number of deep shots 
down the field during a game so he'll stop trying to make big plays. Keep up the good work. Go Knowles. Not even a question. Just want to share some thoughts. Appreciate that. We appreciate that. Thought. Yeah, it looks like uh, Frank Murphy, uh, his Wikipedia entry is that he was a former gridiron football wide receiver. <laughs> so gridiron and football, he did both. Um, drafted by the Bears in the sixth round of the 2000 NFL draft. Okay. He played college football for Kansas State. Right. So that means Frank Murphy was on the team that blew the Big 12 championship game to Texas A&M that allowed Florida State to play Tennessee in the Fiesta Bowl. So there you go, guys. There's a little bit of history for Bring you. Back. So that was that, that 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 could have been one of the more uh, one of the sadder days of Frank Murphy's career, yeah. um, losing that game because if they win that game, they play for the national championship, but they lost to Datwin in the Texas A&M Aggies, and then Florida State went on to uh, well, they lost to Tennessee, but only because they didn't have Winky. Dude, there's a guy that worked at a TV station across the street in Mississippi. Huge Datwin fan. I mean, huge. Like, uh, uh, he was a white guy from Alabama. Loved right. Datwin. Just Shanna, absolutely adored uh, him. I think the hardest Shanna ever made me laugh was, uh, do you remember that song from Lauryn Hill? Dad. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That she every time she heard his name, she go Datwin, <laughs> Datwin. <laughs> so yeah, that was good. Datwin could play, man. He was legit play. He played for the yeah, Cowboys too, right? I think he, he played yeah, for he good. a little for good. a minute in the NFL. Play. That that'd be interesting, right? Like, hey, you're like on a pitch count, James. Like, hey, man, we're only going to give you, you know, like two plays a quarter where there's going to be a route that's over 15 yards, and you can actually look at it. Otherwise, it's a decoy. Don't even, don't even, don't even look in that direction. Man, isn't that that's not, you, I get it. I understand it. I'm kind of on board with it actually. But golly, that's such a you are you are playing with your hands tied behind your back, yeah. man. You imagine being a coordinator, being like, "We're gonna run these posts, but don't even look. We this is a screen pass. Like the whole, the, like they just rip half your playbook out and throw it in the trash. Uh, that's that's gonna be hard for for those for those guys to do. Yeah. All right, there we go. We made it uh, two weeks in the books of Florida State football. Hope you all enjoy your weekend watching the other games going on. Across the country, I really I don't even know any other game besides uh, Miami and Louisville, but I'll be watching that intently. Maybe I'll even take some notes, and we can talk about it on the Monday show. What is One more thing about Shanna, she she before you go, I did mean to I did mean to interrupt you, okay. but I just wanted to get it out. She texted me the other night saying that she actually asked a question during our live show on the YouTube page, but mm -hmm. we didn't read it. Really? And I'm like, hey man, that's my the only that's way you get guaranteed of getting something read is if you donate. And she said in no uncertain terms that she's not going to be donating. Okay. So then I said, well, then you're not getting your question read. Exactly. In fact, we've already talked about her too much as it is. And you're not getting your spousal support either then, lady. Well, uh, let's not go crazy. <laughs> let's know. That's uh, incorrect. I didn't see it. I didn't see it, Shan. I would have popped you up on the screen. I promise. Uh, I told her you did see it and you completely ignored uh, it because there was no dollar amount. We're not, you're not getting the same airtime as Ray Pereira or Four. James B., or Willie Johnston, man. You see our guy Willie Johnson on the recruiting chat drop 150 the other night? That, so there's a new standard now, it yeah. sounds like. Tay Miller's it, another guy I think that's thrown $100 down in a live show. It's uh, it's crazy, man. We, we got good it. fans, man. We, we do. really do appreciate all you guys. We do not take it for granted. We never will, I promise. Thank Hope, you very much. Hopefully this football team will love you back the way you love them Absolutely. sooner than later. Sooner Absolutely. Than later. Corey, do you love everybody out there? I do love everybody. I want everybody to have a great weekend. Um, enjoy the football that you get to watch. Maybe enjoy the fact that you're not watching Florida State. You, you can That probably guarantees you'll have a, a pretty decent Saturday. And, uh, yeah, just take care of yourselves and each other. Uh, be, be nice. Be polite. I don't want to see any of you guys on my Twitter feed ranting and raving inside some Walmart. Mm. Just don't want to see it. Nope. I'm tired of it. It, it. You know, every time I see it, I, I'm I, it just – it doesn't make my blood boil as much as it just makes me sad. Like mm. some of these people are obviously mentally ill and we don't help the mentally ill in this country enough at all. But then some of it is just dumb. People don't know they're dumb. Where are you? And I don't want you, right I don't want you guys to be those people. I want you to understand that you're smart. You were, you're not no, dumb. People don't listen to this show. You're That's smart. Right. So stay smart. Be okay. good to your neighbors. Be good to each other. And by God, be good to us. Finally, an answer to the age-old question, which comes first, the chicken or the egg roll? Easy. Just eat whichever one's closest. 
The Sensation Salad and Filet Sandwich Meal are back at Zaxby's. Both feature our famous hand-breaded chicken, crispy wontons, Asian slaw, and citrus vinaigrette. And each comes with its very own egg roll. For a limited time, only at Zaxby's. Try them with fried pickles while supplies last.